Well, welcome everybody. Good evening. For the next couple of weeks or so, I will be conducting class uh, from a YouTube site that I am currently setting up. I will give you the link to that sometime on Wednesday. So keep an eye on your Canvas site. If you don't use Canvas at this time, there was an email that was sent to you by the college allowing you to enroll in an online course if you need to either use Canvas, but it's fairly simple to get into. Communication is really important right now. Uh, you need to uh, keep in touch with me. I need to hear from you in regards to any concerns or questions that you might have. You should have my email, but in case you don't, it is grubs at yosemite.edu. That is G-R-U-B-B-S at Y-O-S-E-M-I-T-E dot E-D-U. My goal is to stay as close to our schedule as possible. So please refer to your syllabus and to the schedule that I handed out to you the first week of class. Fortunately, this week we are scheduled to watch the movie Phantom of the Opera. I will post on Canvas Wednesday all of the questions that you will need to review before you watch the film. Please look at your Canvas as to how to find the movie. Uh, I found it on Hulu the other day, so it shouldn't be difficult. For next week's classical period exam, I will give you some questions and thoughts to mull over for the essay. Tests will now be a little bit different. They will not be multiple choice. They're going to be in essay form. That's the only way we can do it. Uh, the college... Uh, as of now mentioned, at the end of March is going to be probably our uh, time for this. But like I said earlier, we, we just don't know. Uh, concert report is number one is still due on this Wednesday. And uh, so you can simply email that to me. That's the best way to do it. And But there is no second report due because all musical and concert events have been canceled. And you wouldn't be able to attend one anyway. So you only have one concert report to do. If you've already done one, you're through. Um... I will mention again later on about Travis Silver's concert. You should have received something on Canvas about his concert and how you can streamline that. I will count that as a first concert report, but that's the last one. So if you haven't gotten any in yet, and if you don't do Travis Silver's concert, you don't have any concert reports in. So be sure that you get that one done, okay? So how do we make up for three hours of class time? Well, it's going to be pretty easy this week because we want to watch a movie, all right? That's going to help out. Two and a half hours in length is Phantom. Uh, so you'll probably spend a couple hours putting your essay together and um, typing it up, making it nice, neat, and clean, and reviewing it. You want this to be written as well as you possibly can. Uh, this will be due no later than Tuesday, March 24th. If I don't receive it by then, then you'll not receive any points for this project. Okay? And March 18th, when that Wednesday night will be considered an absence because you obviously didn't participate in the project at the time and at the class time that it was due. So I will have all of your assignments for you the following week via Canvas. Each week, I will submit a video presentation like what I'm doing now on YouTube to watch and discuss everything that we will be covering in class. Uh, the link will be given to you on Canvas. I'm not going to give it during this video presentation right now. So hang in there, contact me if you have any questions, and hopefully we'll be back to normal as soon as possible. All right. So now I want to talk a little bit about opera and what makes up opera and the different kinds of opera. And I'm going to give you uh, the same uh, message that I'm going to write on Canvas that you will look up. Okay. So you're going to have it in two forms. You're going to have it on the video. You can listen to me present it uh, for the essay that will be due, uh, that will be due after you watch it and um, uh, you'll get it also on canvas in in written form so I'll type that up sometime tomorrow and, and get that off to you okay so there are three types of opera uh, there's what we call uh, the opera comique it's a light opera it's not very serious in nature uh, like comique comedy it has a very small cast. Usually it's only about an hour and a half in length, somewhat short. It can be funny, but sometimes it's almost sometimes a little bit of black humor with it, uh, uh, black comedy. Uh, then there's the operetta. It, too, is lighter uh, uh, in, in uh, content. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour and a half, maybe a couple hours in length. Um, in an operetta, not all of the parts are sung. 
you, if you remember back in the Baroque era when we talked about the different parts in the oratorio of the, of that, that we had uh, a recitative, which was a solo, had a limited accompaniment to it. It was um, uh, also had somewhat of a limited melody, but it, it, what it did, it kind of set the stage for the story that was to come. So an operetta contains a recitative, and then that is always followed by an aria, which is the main song that tells the story, and then usually followed by a chorus, if the opera is big enough to have a cast that large. Sometimes they're small choruses, sometimes they're larger, just depends. But in uh, an operetta, not all the parts are sung. If it's a two or three word sentence, those are usually spoken, okay? Um, the content can usually be humorous, and it can be sometimes romantic uh, in style. Um, the Grand Opera, that's the big daddy of all of them. This is a large scale work. This can range anywhere from two to four hours in length. Um, there are some that have uh, sequels to them, which like our movies today, these might even go for six or eight hours. They were never presented at one time. They might present it over an entire season. Uh, you'd go one time and watch the first opera and then you'd watch this, the, the next one that would follow and so on and so on, much like what we do in our um, movies today. Star Wars, for example, okay? Um, this can have a cast that can range from 30 people up to 300 people. They'll use live sets. They might have live animals on stage. Uh, they might even have fire on stage. Uh, the, the sets and the costumes are extremely elaborate, and um, it's a rather uh, intense, complicated uh, production to put on. Um, so that's what makes up a, a, a grand opera. And the story sometimes ends in tragedy. For example, the, the opera Carmen comes to mind. Um, you have these characters in which uh, you have Carmen, which is the leading lady. Uh, she turns out to be a lady that does some not nice things. And you have a couple of men who are in love with her, and they'll do anything they can to get to her. And uh, in fact, one of them is a soldier, and he virtually gives up his career to pursue her. And then at the end, she finally ends up going along with the Toreador, and it upsets uh, the soldier so bad that eventually he gets a hold of her, and at the end, he kills her. And uh, so it's almost kind of a comedy tragedy. He's been trying to get a hold of her this entire time, and all of a sudden, he stabs her at the end. So it's kind of like, what? <laughs> so there is a little bit of a, a humor to it. The other one that is quite popular today is the one called The Musical. Very popular on Broadway. Um, Hamilton is a hugely successful movie, as is Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera has played to more people throughout the world than any other show in music history. So it is just a, a, a phenomenal show to watch. So what I want to talk to you right, about right now is... This is a portion that I'm going to send out to you on Canvas, and um, uh, this is uh, the main content of the essay that you're going to need to put together for The Phantom of the Opera. So, opera has always been one of those musical areas that people either like it or they dislike it, they either love it or they hate it. In the United States, it has taken over 50 years to bring opera to uh, and musical theater uh, to a place where virtually people of all backgrounds and educations they seem to enjoy. Going back to music comedies such as Grease, starring uh, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, hugely successful uh, musical. Um, you can already find tickets to some of these shows today. And uh, Phantom, Hamilton, the Opera Carmen uh, are example. If, uh, uh, and right now, I think I mentioned that uh, we have a young lady, former graduate of MJC, Lindsay Pierce, who is starring in, in the Broadway musical Wicked, uh, uh, right now. And um, uh, of course, all Broadway shows have been closed down because of what's going on right now. But uh, tickets are sold out. People are buying these constantly. So, so in what way, I want you to think about this, in what way have artists, musical artists, brought musical theater into our pop culture? Think about what that is. Why are musical theater productions becoming so popular right now? I'd like for you to describe the primary differences between a musical, an operetta, and a grand opera. What makes them different? I want you to review those musical terms that we discussed when we got to the Baroque era, such as the recitative, the aria, the chorus. When we got to that point, when we were talking specifically about Handel's uh, Baroque oratorio 
Messiah. Okay. What about the sets? Costumes are different between each one, between musicals, operettas, operas, grand operas. I'd like you to talk about those when you watch The Phantom. What did you think about those sets? What did you think about the setting of it? What did you think about the place? Okay. What musical elements did Phantom contain that help you to inspire at your answer as to whether it's a musical or an operetta or a grand opera? The story of Phantom uh, was play is placed in the 19th century. I would like for you to know what city and what country this show and story takes place in. What is so unique about the Opera House that to this day, daily tours are sold out? I had the opportunity to visit this Opera House a year ago last December and uh, got in about an hour before they closed and was able to see most of the tour. Incredible place, incredible place. So this is exactly the same place where, where Phantom was filmed as well. as Today it's still a, a very functioning Opera House. Um, who are the primary characters? There are three of them. We commonly know those as the leads, the lead players. What are their names? What was their relationship to each other? I would like you to describe what happens in the final scene between these three people and these three principal characters that happens underneath the opera house. Finally, what was your overall reaction to this film? Were you able to open your mind as I talked about the first night of the class and take in this new art form that you've probably never experienced before? Would you be willing to go to a live, that is a stage production of it? Or did you prefer, prefer the movie? Whichever one you defend is fine, does not matter. But I want you to tell me why you defended it and why you liked it or did not like it. Do some research. There's a ton of material out there on this show right now. And uh, so it's not hard to go on and Google Phantom of the Opera and, and read about it. Read about the history of it. Read about the Opera House. Read about the guy that originally wrote it. And uh, it's interesting. It really is. If you have ever seen a stage production, I'd like for you to discuss your thoughts in regards to that. What did you like better? For those of you that have seen the live version of Phantom... And the movie, which did you like better? Did you like the movie better? Did you like the live version better? Doesn't matter. I've seen them both. I've seen, uh, the, obviously, the movie many times uh, in class, but I've also seen the live version four times. I saw it twice in San Francisco. And, uh, excuse me, three times. I saw it twice in San Francisco, and I saw it once in uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas was really cool. They had, you know, all kinds of pyro fire stuff going on. And, yeah, that, that was... Um, but I like the one in San Francisco. I like the old theater and, and, and the way they presented it there. That was, um, that was rather, uh, rather unique to be a part of that. Uh, a friend of mine was actually in that production, and uh, she told me the story about how the boots that she wore for one scene, one scene only, she had a, it wasn't the lead, but it was a secondary lead, that the boots that she wore in this production were $400 just for the boots. And I found that kind of unique. I asked her if she was able to keep them. She said, no, those went back to the company. So uh, this assignment is due no later than Tuesday, March 24th. So you'll watch it on Wednesday. You can watch it at your leisure, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whenever you want to watch the, the movie, okay? But uh, as I mentioned in my canvas to you earlier, hopefully the last few days you've been trying to locate it and find it. If you can't, find something that's got the DVD or, or, or something. But it's out there. And uh, I like I said, I went to Hulu and it popped right up. Okay, this is the one that stars Gerard Butler. Okay, that is the important part. I want the one that stars Gerard Butler. Many of you know him from a rash of movies that he's done. Uh, London is Falling, um, um, many, many others. Okay, so um, on Wednesday, March 25th is when this is due. Uh, and I will give you another video presentation next week as we prepare for the romantic period. And I will also issue to you the questions that will be on the essay for the classical period. So, if you have any questions at all, please email them to me. Um, and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. 
and um, because we do want to keep abreast of everything that's going on, okay? And uh, But the main thing here is communication. I don't want anybody left out in the cold because they didn't understand how to use Canvas. Uh, find a classmate. People know how to do it, all right? Uh, and if you are a college student, you are eventually going to have to use Canvas. So, uh, <clears throat> like I said, you don't have to worry about Zoom. We're not doing that. I'm going to do my presentation.